Hello guys, we are back to the next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through Apache Hive, guys. So in our previous lecture, we discussed till our previous lecture we discussed about Hadoop, right? Apache Hadoop. Yes. So in this lecture, let us continue with Apache Hive. So it is an open source data warehouse system for querying and analyzing the large data sets stored in H files. So H files are nothing but your Hive files, guys. Okay. So this. Apache Hive was developed by Facebook guys. Okay, so which is currently being used by Facebook also. Okay. Okay, so basically Hive provides the functionality of reading, writing, managing large database reside, residing in the distributed system. So you might be having a doubt. So everything is done by it. So what is the use of SQL? So SQL is also doing the same things, right? If you recall. Yes. So it works, the Hive will work with the help of SQL guys. So it runs with SQL like queries. So those are nothing but HQL that are those are called as Hive query languages. So SQL plus Hive is not gives you Hive query languages. So now let us go through some features of Hive. So it is a fast scalable. Okay. So it provides SQL like queries. So how you we are having in SQL we are having in Hive also that are implicitly transfer transform to map radius. Okay. So it is capable of analyzing a large data sets stored in HDFS, so basically it also depends on those things. It allows a different storage types such as plain text or any kind of format, guys. It will be allowing, okay. So it supports user-defined UDFs. UDFs are nothing but user-defined functions, right? Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about the features of Hive and what is Hive. So now let us go through the limitations and after that we will be moving on to architecture, guys, okay? Yes. So limitations of Hive. So it is not capable of handling real-time data. So basically here, whenever you are getting some real time data, analysis and everything cannot be done properly guys. That is an issue with Hive. Similarly, we are having, it is not designed for online transactions. So basically if you want to do any kind of online transaction, so those also come under live data transfer, right? So those are also really tough here. Similarly, Hive query contains high latency. So it takes some time. It's not too fast. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now let us go through the architecture. So this is the architecture guys. So it is having the three different layers you can say. The first one is a Hive client and Hive server and after that we are having MapReduce and HDFS. So the same concept, this is also on, built on MapReduce. Okay. Okay. So in a Hive client, we are having a three different drivers guys or server you can say. Here we are having a Thrift server, JDBC driver and ODBC driver. Okay. So you can even write in depth among these two things guys, because we already know about JDBC and ODBC drivers. We already discussed in web technology. So you can write from there if needed. Okay. Yes. Similarly, Hive services. So Hive can provide services for a Hive web UI. So basically you can create the front end, you can create the CLI and you can create the server and drivers and we will be having a meta store and from the meta store, you'll be reducing it and storing it into the HDFS, right? Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about the flow. So now let us go through the definition of each and every one in detail guys okay yes so hive client so hive allows writing applications in various languages including c c plus plus java and python it supports different types of clients okay so we are having the three different things you can say that is nothing but a thrift server jdbc driver and odbc driver guys so basically using these we can create a multiple clients right yes so it is a cross uh, thrift server it is a cross language server service provider platform that server the request for all those programming languages that it supports okay similarly jdbc driver it is used to establish a connection between the hive and java application the jdbc driver is present in the class it is called as org.apache.hadoop.hive.jdbc hive driver. Okay. Yeah. So in that location, you can get it. Okay. Similarly, ODBC driver, it allows the application to support ODBC protocols to connect with hive. Okay. Yes. So this is all about the client guys. So now let us move on to server. So you, few of you might got the doubt that what is this CLI, right? That is nothing but command line interface guys. Okay. So hive CLI, that is nothing but using command line interface. You can communicate with the server, right? Yes. So that is nothing but hive CLI. Okay. It's a shell based and you can use with commands. Okay. Similarly, hive web UI. So basically the front end of a website, you can say the hive web UI is just an alternative for the command line. Here you can use the graphical user interface and you can communicate with the system to the backend. So it provides the web basic GUI for executing the hive queries and commands. Okay. Similarly, hive meta storage. It is a certain repository that stores all the structured information of a various tables and partitions in the warehouse. It also includes the metadata and columns and its type information and everything. Okay. Yes. 
similarly now let us move on to hive server so basically server is main right yes so it is a refer referred as an apache thrift server so basically if you observe almost 70 to 80 percent of the servers which we are using in our real time for any website it might be most of them will be with apache guys right yes so it accepts the request from a different clients and provides it to hive drivers okay so what are hive drivers hive drivers are nothing but our jdbc odbc those things so it receives the queries from different sources like a web gui and all those things and it translates the queries into compiler so once it is pushed into the compiler the hive compiler this purpose of the hive compiler is to parse the query and perform the semantic analysis and then get the data and convert it into map reduce jobs okay so these map reduce jobs will be pushed into our execution and they will be executed to get the data so optimized generation the logical plans in the form of dag that's not the direct cyclic like graph of map reduce tasks and hdfs task in the end we will be getting our results that's it so this is all about hive guys so i hope everyone got some basic idea on hive so in the next lecture we will be discussing about one more important topic that is nothing but apache pigs guys so once it is done we will be moving to differences between this apache pig and hive okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching